Oriana came up to Pizarro and said, look, give me the brigantine, give me the boat and a few canoes, some of the men, and I'll go downstream and try and find some food, and I'll come back in three or four days. And Pizarro looked at him and said, whatever you think's best. Oriana left next day with 57 men. But within days, so he said later, he realized the current was too strong and he couldn't go back. So we chose what seemed to us the lesser of two evils, Oriana said. Trusting to God, we'd go on and follow the river and either die or see what marvels lay ahead. What he didn't know was that ahead of him was the greatest river on earth. The first few days, they passed through an empty landscape, chewing their boots to stay alive. So close to death, they were hallucinating. Then, on Monday evening, the 8th of January, they heard drums. Orayana landed and nervously went into the forest. They were the first Europeans to walk in the interior of Amazonia. I think they might be asleep. Um, I don't think there's anybody home right now. They got their boots. Their boots are here. So they're obviously... Hmm. Yeah, but it's closed up. Alin Ponche. Alin Chichi. Nobody here. Well, they did run away when Oriana first uh, landed, left their cooking pots and their food. Oriana's men were starving, so of course they um, stuffed themselves. The Indians were very nice about it when they came back. The man's name was Tapui, Nelson Tapui. He farmed here with his family, pretty much cut off from the outside world. He spoke Quechua, the Inca language. Oh, we have to talk slower than that. <laughs> and language would be the key to Oriana's survival. He began to put words down in a notebook. Yeah, what's the, what's the name in uh, Quechua? La yuca, como se dice in Quechua? Lumu. 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 La yuca. So yucca is lumu, that's a very... The captain made a point to get to understand the native languages, and, um, says the diary, and he made his own primer to help him. So if you ask for good water, to, to drink, to drink... Yaku takui, deme agua. Yaku takui. Yaku takui, uh -huh. para mi. Takui is give me, yaku yeah. is water. Yeah. Nelson sent his son up a tree to bring seed pods for us to eat. The native people here were called Imara. They gave Oriana food too. They let the Spaniards stay with them for a month to recover their health, saved them from death. Pacay. 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 Can I open? Okay. Dios pagaracho. 
Oh, so get into these. Wow. Delicious. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. At this moment, Orellana was still thinking like a conquistador. He told his hosts that he was claiming them and their land for the king of Spain. Bye bye. But maybe a change was beginning to take place in his mind. For kind treatment of the Indians, he said now, was the right way to follow. Over the coming months, Orellana would make contact with many different Indian peoples. Some, like Nelson, would feed and shelter him. Some would try to kill him. <laughs> the mum gives us a smile. I think she thought we were aliens at first. Back up river, Pizarro was waiting for Orellana to return, his men now dying around him. And as the days turned to weeks, he began to suspect that his loyal cousin might have betrayed him. Oriana's encounter with the Imara had offered hope of survival. Now he and his men decided to get their story straight. They appointed a scribe to put down on paper why they deserted Pizarro. And each and every one of them put his name to it. We've travelled 200 leagues through savage jungles, they said. We've all seen it with our own eyes. We felt constant fear of losing our lives because of suffering and hunger. How much more danger and death would there be were we to turn back now? Therefore we all beg you, they say to Arayana, not to ask us to do this. And we ask our scribe to write it down, that we are all willing to follow you by any other route to save our lives, but not to turn back. But was Oriana being quite truthful? Or did he hope to claim the secret of El Dorado for himself? We continued on his track, down the coca to its junction with the Napo. Not so long ago, this was just a mission station. Now the town of Francisco Orellana is a Wild West place which has boomed with the opening up of the forest to the new conquistadors, the loggers and the oil men. Just looking around ourselves, you've seen sort of the, off, the open sewers and the dogs running wild and the terrible overcrowding, you suddenly understand why it was that diseases evolved in cities where there were huge concentrations of people rather than in the far healthier lifestyle of the jungle. And this is, I suppose, the second conquista, isn't it? You know, first they came looking for gold in El Dorado, and uh, now the forests are being plundered. So they've had their rubber, yeah. and now it's the hardwoods and it's black gold oil. oil. Yeah. Adios, amigo. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. When you get to Manaus, remember, if you go swimming, don't have a pee. <laughs> and so we said our goodbyes oh, to Dr. Colley. Oh, dear. Our next leg would take us down the Napo, the Conquistador's wow. River of Cinnamon. Here's to the River Napo. 
Orellana sailed on past other great rivers, the Aguarico, the Curare, down into what is now Peru. We made good speed, says the diary, sometimes more than 20 leagues a day, for the river's flow was swift and strong. Oriana was now on one of the main tributaries of the Amazon, heading east through a vast fluid wilderness. From the air, it's a bewildering maze. Out here, nature seems to have no bounds. Oriana and his men must have gazed on the scene, part in wonder, part in terror. A few days later, they came to a gigantic confluence, the Napo and the Marañón, the beginning of the Amazon proper. And as Orellana reached the Marañón, far to the west, Pizarro had finally given up hope of seeing him again and ordered his men to turn back. There's a shift now in the tone of the expedition diary kept by the priest, Father Cafajal. It may be hindsight, but he seems aware now that the journey was turning into an epic of exploration. It seemed to us, by our continuing survival, that our Lord Jesus was pleased with such a great venture into the unknown. For such a feat of discovery surely might not otherwise have taken place for many centuries into the future. Oh, muchas gracias. Okay. 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 Oh, man. <laughs> it was here that Orellana first heard strange stories of a fierce tribe of female warriors, like the Amazons of Greek myth. His contemporaries never believed him, but he always swore the tale was true. It's a myth which crops up in many places. And maybe it's not just a myth. The Spanish say that when they came down the Amazon and they, there were all these uh, tribes that were ruled by women, and only when they wanted children did they go and raid and get the men and then they'd have sex with them and then they'd get pregnant and then they'd boot the men up. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are there still... Can you still find women like this on the Amazon? <laughs> uh, dominant. Yes, there are women who are dominant. Of course. Yes, there are women who have power over the men. <laughs> no one knows for sure whether the Amazons really existed but they gave the river the name it still has today, Rio Amazonas, the river of the Amazons. All the way through what is now Peru, the local people treated these strangers from another world kindly. But did Orellana ever see them as fully human like himself? I think he remained a conquistador. 
Nonetheless, he was still carefully recording words from the river languages. Next to God, says the diary, the captain's understanding of the native languages was the deciding factor in saving us all from death. Great, great. On the Rio Napo. Rio Napo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oriana's diary is the first description of the peoples of Amazonia. This part of the river, he says, they were part of a great federation, the Aparians. In the two centuries after the coming of the Spanish, 90% of the population here died from violence and disease. Today, the survivors are people living after a Holocaust. It was a tragedy which went almost unrecorded. Here in Iquitos, Father Joaquin is trying to set the record straight to recover the lost history of Amazonia. In the 16th century, these were big towns, large and well-organized communities. So maybe what you see now is a distant reminder of what Oriana saw. I have studied the case of Orellana for a long time, and I concluded that Orellana met a huge diversity of peoples here. We wondered what happened to all these people. We reckon there were over six million in the whole of Amazonia. The Spaniards were amazed by the natural produce of the forest and the river, the huge quantities of fish of every kind, parrots, turtles as large as leather shields. Ah, In his library, Father Joaquin has a copy of the original diary. This is the hand. The, this is the hand writing of Carvajal. This account was written by Friar Gaspar de Carvajal, a friar of the Order of Dominicans, of the voyage of discovery down the great and famous river. The great, the famous great river. Por muy gran honra el Francisco Orellana. And I was an eyewitness to these amazing things, says Carvajal, a man whom God chose to play a part in such a strange and hitherto never experienced voyage of discovery. This is the next stage of our Amazon journey, the Natalia Carolina. It says, heading for Caballo Cocha today, six o'clock, por mi madre, sin falta, on my mother, without fail. Oh, <laughs> about half past six. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is Amazon time. Oriana stayed with the Aparians for two months to build a second bigger boat, a 30-footer, a boat strong enough for the sea. When he left in late April, he still had 2,000 miles of river to go. El Dorado is distant now. And for me, the voyage had begun to gather like static the history of the intervening 500 years. The later conquistadors, like the demented Aguirre, the so-called wrath of God, 
The missionaries, the prospectors and the debt raiders, they all came this way. And the clamour of history rose like the sound of the forest in the night. And in the ghostly shapes we passed, it was easy to imagine the Spaniards on their fragile craft. What hardships, what suffering, and what extraordinary dangers we passed through, wrote Friar Carvajal. He lost an eye in one attack. The people were more hostile now. And as for Oriana, too kind-hearted a soul by far, some said. He had learned to read the signs and to negotiate fear, most of all, perhaps, in himself. They now began to see canoes everywhere. They were approaching even richer lands. By the middle point of the river, they came past huge settlements extending for many miles without any gaps between the clusters of houses. These were large, well-organized communities with thousands of people, real high cultures. They were now inside the territory of a huge native federation which stretched for hundreds of miles along the river, the Omagua. They passed so many towns that they could only remember them by giving jokey tags to people and places. Main Street, Chinatown, Viciousville, and Stupidville. So Oriana's diary offers a new history for Amazonia. An elaborate series of ancient kingdoms, networks and alliances which had developed over thousands of years united by the river itself. After three days sailing, we reached the Brazilian frontier. Oriana had to pass a border here too, the frontier of the Machiparo state. He had to fight his way through. It's so relaxed today, I couldn't find anyone to stamp my passport. But the spectre of Gonzalo Pizarro still haunted Orellana and his men. Orellana never forgot the potential cost of crossing Gonzalo Pizarro, member of the most powerful family in the Americas. Desertion, after all, was punishable by death, and their boyhood friendship would count for very little. So he and his men, all through the journey, covered themselves. This is the second main document that they drew up, formally petitioning Oriana to be their leader, and every single member of the expedition has signed it with loud protestations of loyalty to the governor, Gonzalo Pizarro. But at this moment, they had no idea whether Pizarro was alive or dead. Pizarro, though, was a man who could face death without flinching. The tale of his hellish return has inspired movies, plays and books ever since. For suffering, famine and misery, wrote one conquistador, this was the worst journey ever in the Indies. Attacked all the way, Pizarro didn't know where he was or what direction to take to reach Peru or any place Christians might be. We ate all our dogs and horses, he wrote, and we got back with only our swords and the rotten rags we stood up in. Pizarro's only thought now was revenge against his boyhood chum, the worst liar that ever there was.
And Oriana sailed on as amazing spectacles of nature came one after the other. In early June, Oriana arrived at the site of Manaus, where the river stretches to the horizon wide as an inland sea. Manaus was built in the center of the rainforest, founded as a Jesuit mission in the 18th century when the opening up of Amazonia really started. Where the opera house and the grand mansions now stand, Oriana saw huge settlements of native people lining the waterfront. There are few places where you feel more strongly the all-consuming march of history. Looking centuries into the future, Oriana's diary says this, it was our desire that if possible, the land and its barbaric people should not have negative feelings about our first encounter. So that one day the country might be tamed for pacification and reduced to obedience to our Christian civilization. The Western conception of a city was a new innovation in the Americas which came with the conquest. They require a new way of life, new laws and customs and institutions to make a new identity, to reshape humanity, if you like. They also suck in the products of the natural world, of the forest and the river, and consume them. And in that, cities like this, Manaus, represent a break in that continuum of thousands of years of life here in the Americas. There may have been five million indigenous people here when Orayana came through. And the present population of the natives of Amazonia is 250,000, less than a quarter of this city. That's the scale of the revolution. At last, after eight months on the river and against all the odds, in August 1542, Oriana reached the mouth of the Amazon. They had sailed 2,500 miles down the greatest river on earth. They had seen unknown empires and encountered lost worlds. It had been less of a journey, said one of them, more of a miracle. But even as their makeshift boats carried the 47 survivors to safety in the Caribbean, back in Quito, Gonzalo Pizarro was petitioning the king for revenge. <laughs> 